three different tools, three different strategies. Today I'm gonna show you everything I had to do to program these on this machine, why they're important, why it's cool, and um, yeah, that's it. So let's get into it. So, what are we doing in today's video? Well, if you look behind me, I have made a four inch tall blade, and every one inch I'm going to use a different strategy to create that shape. We're gonna start with swarfing, go on to using a barrel mill, and then use a ball mill slow, and then use a ball mill really fast. And that's gonna create this part. So I'm gonna go over how I program that and the different strategies so you can kind of see the advantages and different so you can see the advantages and disadvantages of each one of these strategies. And also, by the way, swarfing is not chips. Swarfing is a five-axis contour. I don't care what all you people from Great Britain say. No one calls chips swarf anymore. So you can stop commenting that, because A, I don't care, and B, no one calls it that. So not only are you wrong, but every software in the world also calls this a swarf. So, yeah, come at me, bro. Come at me, bro. <laughs> first tool we are going to be using an end mill and with this tool we are going to be doing a swarfing operation so what does that look like well so if we come over here and we can see where I have my swarfing operation we'll click on it now, there's a few things I want to go over with you that you need to consider when doing this first off your coordinate system is just going to be Mac 1 the machine is going to figure out all the tilting for you you don't have to create some kind of work plane or anything like that after that we're gonna go into geometry and this is kind of where the most important features are so the first thing we're gonna to wanna to look at is our swarf faces, which if I show it to you, it's just gonna be the face on the model that I want to swarf. Now you're gonna notice I am swarfing up here and not all the way down the face. I'm gonna show you how I did that in just a second. Now there's a few options you can do when swarfing. You can either pick faces at the bottom of your swarf or you could pick two curves for the tool to follow. Here I just use floor surfaces. I'll show those to you right now. You can see I selected these faces at the bottom of the face that I'm swarfing and that was enough for this to work. Now in other softwares, you have to pick two curves for the tool to follow on the top and bottom of your surface. Here, again, I just used a bottom face. And then what I told it was to clear the floor faces by 3.850. So what that's going to do is it's gonna go 3.850 from the bottom of this face right here, the very, very top point of the radii where it ends. It's gonna go 3.850 from the top. And if you look at the part, the reason why I chose that number is because if I, so if I measure from this face to this face right here, if you look at this purple line right here, you can see it's 4.9 inches from the bottom to the top. So I told it plus the top of the radius, 3.850, which came out to be about 900 thousandths was my depth of cut with that tool. So with all those options picked out, you check out the simulation. What will that look like? Well, machine simulation. So we'll run our tool. And as you can see, it is doing everything it can with the five axes it has to maintain a straight plane pretty much on the part. So the part's really like this. So the machine's gonna have to tilt to hit all these surfaces as it goes around it. So that is what swarfing is. That is how it works. And that's how you program it in SolidCam. And that is the first feature we're going to do on this part. So let's see what that looks like. So let's take a look at what this swarf wound up looking like. Pretty nice here, honestly. It looks like a regular contour, like on a mill that you can hear, for example, running behind me. But yeah, that's pretty much what you're gonna get with swarfing. It's just gonna look like you'd expect, right? It's just an end mill following a straight surface, but using rotary axis to achieve the point. So now let's go on to our next tool, which is a barrel mill. Now, one thing I want to note here before I get into all the operations is that I am using a high feed end mill to rough out the whole part, and then I'm doing different finishing operations as I go down the part. So the high feed end mill just comes in and just goes around the whole part, leaves 20 thou, and then we're going to do our different operations as the video goes on. So now we are on to our barrel mill. Do a barrel roll. Now, a barrel mill is basically an end mill 
that has two different radii ground into the outside profile of the shape of the end mill. What this allows us to do is instead of like a regular end mill where we are limited to the side of the end mill, how deep we can cut, or like a ball nose end mill where we only have one small radius at the bottom we can use, this actually has a gigantic 100 millimeter radius ground into the side profile of this end mill. And it allows us to get a way bigger depth of cut to also achieve a way better finish. It's really nice how they work. So let's go over kind of the thought process on what I did to use it on this part. So we'll hop in a solid cam here and we'll open up our five axis profiling of the faces. Now again, for our coordinate system, you're just gonna use Mac one. And at this point, I'm just gonna say that for the rest of these tool paths, I'm just using Mac one, which is the machine coordinate that I created off the top of the part. The software is gonna figure out all the tilting for me. So for geometry, we are going to look at our drive surface. So I'll show that to you right here. That is just our faces. All right, but as you can see here, again, I only did a limited amount of that face. Well, how I controlled that was right here with this limit cut by one or two points. The points I just selected right here. I said I wanted to start at Z of minus 0.8 and finish at Z of minus 1.5. Let's kind of go into one important thing right here. In our tool axis control, you're gonna see that my tilt angle is at 83 degrees. Now, where did that number come from? Well, if I took the tool and put it perfectly perpendicular, perpendicular. So if I took my tool and I put it, don't laugh, dude, if you laugh, I laugh. So if I took my tool and I put it perfectly perpendicular to my drive surface, that would be 90 degrees. But with this tool, I want to tilt off a little bit. So I put seven degrees in there, which will give us 83. Now where I got seven degrees from is I simply put this on a shadow graph and looked at my barrel mill and kind of found the best spot, which I found was seven degrees, which is right in the middle of that gigantic radius on the side of this end mill. Now right here is what's really interesting to me about using a barrel mill is you're gonna notice my scallop height is only seven tenths. So that means the roughness from the peaks and valleys of the surface we're gonna create is only seven tenths. What's crazy is, is when you're using a barrel mill, you can achieve that scallop height with a 148 thousandths step over. And when we run our next tool path, you're gonna see why that's really impressive. So before we get into that, let's run this tool path. I wanna show you what that looks like. So in our simulation, nice little solid cam logo there, little shameless plug. So as you can see, we have our barrel mill in there, but what is this going to look like when it runs? Well. So you can see with the barrel mill, we can actually have a very big contact point while stepping down. So if you look at the next step over, it's like 148 thousandths down. That really is tremendous to only have a seven tenths scallop. So let's run it in the machine now for real and let's see what that seven tenths scallop actually looks like. We just finished the second tool. So let's take a look at it. Now, I think that is a beautiful finish, especially for a 150,000 step down. In all honesty, you can't really compare it with swarfing. That is hot, ow. You can't compare that with swarfing because swarfing is, you know, one flat surface against one flat surface. Of course, that's gonna be perfect. But I would definitely give this a fair second place. So yeah, just a technique you might want to keep in mind if you're ever doing a surface like this. That barrel mill Do a barrel roll. can create almost just as good as a surface as the side of an end mill. That's really impressive. So yeah, come a little closer. Take a look at this. You can barely feel the difference. I mean, it's minimal. All right, so that is what that looks like. Now let's go on to the ball nose end mill. I'm going to show you how I programmed it and what the results were, I actually think this might be the most shocking part of this video. So let's run it. Well, first I'm gonna show you what, the, first I'm gonna show you what it So we're back into it. We are back at the solid cam desk. Now for the final tool, we are going to be using a ball nose end mill, all right? Now here is where I think you're going to find this pretty shocking. So. This is what my tool path looked like. This is what the ball nose tool path looks like, right? Let's take a look at the barrel mill. So look at the difference in the step over, right? That is really tremendous. You're talking like 15% as many passes. 
and you're going to be surprised at the, the results we get in the machine in a second, but I'm going to show you, just to prove to you, that I did the same thing. So we did all the same parameters in our tool path except for two things. For our tool axis control, we did our tool tilt angle at 45 degrees. So this is 90, this is 45. So our radius will be tangent to the part at 45 degrees. That's the one difference, all right? The other tool was seven. The other difference is going to be, we are doing the same scallop size of seven tenths, but look at the difference on our step over. It's roughly about a millimeter, 37 thousandths is the step over for this tool. So what do you have to do? So that's roughly 40, 80, 120. So 3.5 passes to every one pass for our other tool. So what's this gonna look like? Well, I'm glad you asked. So in the simulation, you're gonna see the same thing as you're gonna see in the machine, which, duh. You see a little bit more movement here as far as the whole machine moving around and the different types of rotary movements you're going to have to do to achieve the proper points of geometry of this part. Kind of hard to see it in the simulation. You will see it in the machine, but the whole A-axis actually has to move a little bit to reach these points. So again, you will see the simulation matches very, very well what we do in the machine. But yeah, look how slow this is going to be, right? I mean, I could even speed this up in the simulation to just a stupid speed. And yeah, even then, it's gonna take forever. So let's run it real quick. I wanna show you the results. Again, you are going to find this pretty shocking. speed this up to just a stupid speed. To just a stupid speed. We ran the third tool. So let's take a look at the results. Again, I think you might find this pretty shocking. So the results are that, ah, oh God, it's hot. I did that twice. So the results are that that ball nose at a way smaller step over is a lot rougher than that barrel mill. I mean, really, it's like terrible compared to pretty awesome. Now there's one more thing I want to show you. We already ran this, but we went 50 inches a minute here and then we went 150 inches a minute here. Now, I don't really want to go back and forth between the computer and everything. I don't want to waste your time. I just want to show you the results were the same. So we literally tripled the feed rate and the results were the same between the two ball noses right here or the two parts of the part that the ball nose did. The surface was the same. And yeah, you can see the barrel mill was just hilariously better. So just want to show you that. I guess there's actually nothing to say. So outro time. So yes, that is everything I wanted to show you guys on the three tools I used to make this fan blade part we made on our DBF 6500. I hope you found this information useful. If there's anything you personally would like to see us do with the Siemens Control or the DBF 6500, maybe do different tests like this, let me know down in the comments below. And yes, I'm gonna go eat a Wendy's spicy chicken sandwich plain today. That's how I'm gonna finish this video. Wendy's spicy chicken sandwich plain with honey mustard, my favorite thing ever. Hope you have a good day, bye.